Our countdown to tip off continues today. Stop is Arkadelphia, and we get to visit with the head coach of the Henderson State men's basketball team, Coach Jimmy Elgis, now starting his sixth season. And Coach, again, congratulations to you. I know it's been nine months, and I know we really haven't had a chance to talk much since then, but it was a nice tournament run. It uh, wound up in an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. You were going to get a chance to face Southern Nazarene again. 23 wins last year, Coach, and uh, just really quickly, let, let's revisit. It was a, just a great tournament run for you all. Your team played so well, and I know you said at the time this was not a surprise to them. They went in expecting to play hard, expecting to win, and they they really, I think, made quite a showing in Bartlesville in, in, in March. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Joey. We um... – uh, we were really obviously happy last March. Um, we had a, a good nucleus of seniors that had been through the wars, so to speak, um, winning 19 games as juniors and then and then busting through last year with with 23, as you said. So um, had really hungry guys that wanted to go over to Bartlesville and and prove something. And um, I think they did that. You know, a bunch of those guys, um, Mike Fofana, those five seniors that we had, Chris Owens, Rel Johnson. Tanner Hamilton, Anthony Lapartis, those guys uh, wanted to create a, a special weekend. And with their efforts and hard work, they were able to do that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think one of the, as you and I have spoken over the years, one of the hopefully trademarks of, of what we try to do here at Henderson and what we try to do with our basketball program is not only being successful on the court, but really taking a pride in who you are off the court. And all five of those young men, uh, they needed a little bit of extra work in the classroom and they all came back uh, as of about four days ago and graduated from Henderson with their degree. Uh, and so in addition to, you know, the, the character that they showed um, on the court and playing hard and really buying into their, each their teammate, uh, we require in every drill, encourage the guy in front of you, encourage the guy in front of you, believe in the guy in front of you. And they did that. They did it on the court last year, which resulted in those guys, uh, being very successful and then they did it in the classroom and to me and, and as our staff works here um, that's the thing that we're most proud of you know everybody that started their senior year as you alluded to you know has um, been here for six years now five years and they've all graduated we've had 18 straight players graduate and that is that is really what we take a lot of pride in and the championship's really important but maybe it's just because of of the recent academic successes that they had the last few days that's on my mind but um how they do in the classroom that's paramount because that's that's forever you know you can only play basketball for a handful of years uh, mike's over in portugal we've had some professional guys run through here for sure but that degree lasts lasts a lifetime and uh, that's the most important thing that we do think that we do here and kudos to those guys for coming back and sticking with it and graduating well, congratulations to them as well. Seriously, Coach, that that's a fantastic thing to to get to open with. Uh, you know, one of the things about last season, and I, I'll mention this because you have a number of players coming back, a number of, of seniors. You know, losing all of those, you still have a number of seniors coming back. So uh, I don't know if this bodes well for you or not later on. With you, <laughs> you're gonna have a couple of classes go through. But you know, one of the things about last uh, last year's schedule, especially when you got into GAC play. And it's well documented, uh, both men's and women's basketball, how well the GAC performed uh, in conference and specifically against non-conference opponents. But when you got into GAC play last year, you gave your fans their money's worth and more. So many close games. It just yeah, came yeah. down to the wire. I mean, there are only two or three uh, throughout a 22-game schedule that were decided one way or the other. Uh, quite uh, quite a, uh, a feat to come away with 23 wins. And that's something looks like it would translate to to making this group stronger, knowing they can win those tight contests. Yeah, it's really important. You know, we 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 put it on a piece of paper for those guys. We take notebooks and and, and work out of those notebooks almost on a daily basis. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, we gave them. You know, because I think when you do have success, I think it becomes a little bit you looking through different kinds of glasses, right? Like all you do is you remember the good things, and you don't remember the tough things that you went through and the practices and and just the, the 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 times that we were down and the times that maybe I got on their tails really hard or coach Rutledge got on their tails and so everything's when you're when you're going through the the year that we're going through right now you reflect and you're like oh this is so hard compared to last year and it's like no guys we we were in 17 ball games that were within one possession at the 3 minute mark and and you're right we came we came through I I, I attribute that to 
having good players, but also those guys really bought into one another. They bought into a level of execution. They bought into, you know, stopping um, people down the stretch. Because as you said, the GAC, in my opinion, was, and the numbers show it, was number two or number three in the league, in, in the country in regards to their to our league. Uh, the evidence was our non-conference successes that all the coaches and programs had, but the fact that we got four team in the NCAA tournament um, and just just the national accolades. You know, we were top five in America in team defense. Um, other guys, you know, score the heck out of the ball. Just just from a national perspective, the GAC is one of the premier basketball leagues in the country. The numbers showed it. The success of having four teams go to the NCAA tournament showed it. And for us to, you know, be towards the top of that league um, and and to come away with a tournament championship, you're right. We have to draw on that. It's a real fine line, Joey, that we're on. Um, and I probably err on the side of not uh, reminiscing or not <laughs> focusing in on the championship. You know that that was special, right? But that was last year. This is a whole new, this is a whole new team, whole new situation. But the thing that's remaining constant is our program. The 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 demands. It's an overused word. You know our process. It's very defined. You know our process is practice championship habits on a daily basis, compete like crazy in games. And then evaluate via film and in, in, in meetings on where we're at, and then go back to our practice. Like we have a very defined process, we have a very defined um, culture, set of core values. So the team's different. Last year's result was very, very special, but uh, this year is, is different. But we've got to rely on our same core values. We got to rely on our same culture, uh, our same beliefs, our same process. And I really think that that we can continue to have and build on the success that we've had the last few years. Um, Joe, you mentioned, you know, some of our returning guys and we wouldn't have been where we were last year, Joey, without, without those guys, we had Raekwon Rogers, uh, who was an all league forward. I think his, he's having a tremendous, you know, practice season and, and really doing a nice job. Quan Marshall, uh, was probably one of the best leaders I've ever coached. Uh, one of, he's, he's our heartbeat. He's our soul. He, he does everything at a very high level and was really hurt a lot last year. You know, he had a groin, he had a knee and, and he's been relatively healthy. He's done a very nice job for us. Jeremiah Tony's a young man. He's been with me for three years. Who's, who's another very emotional him and Quan Marshall, both won a state championship at Mills high school and, um, have played together for a number of years. Um, Xavier Davenport is a guy we're really expecting a lot of big things from. He played behind Lapartis and Rel Johnson and is as talented as those guys for sure. Um, but now it's his turn and he's embraced that. You know, it's one thing to talk the talk. You know, it's easy for, well, we did this or did that, but you got to walk the walk. And Xavier's mm -hmm. done that. He's, when he's been here, he's had a tough health wise. We've had a little bit of ups and downs with Xavier, but he's done a great job of, of, relishing his new leadership role, relishing just the expectations and some of the things that he's gone through last year. And then we got two sophomores. One of them, Tom Holchich, has been with us for a year that we are really excited about, an inside guy. A year ago today, he was probably 285 pounds. Right now he's about 240, moving a lot better, um, finishing plays, playing really hard. He's a tough-minded kid. And then Graham Chenault, he also has been with me for three years, and he was had an injury, uh, a red shirt, medical red shirt last year that we're really excited about having Graham back because he's been he's been on campus the last two summers, um, you know. And then our final returning guy, a guy named Carson Cates, who is is one of our loudest, most vocal, um, team first guy, uh, again that I've coached. He's, he's bought into our culture and things. So when you add Jeremiah Tony, three year player. Raekwon Rogers, four-year player, Graham Chenault, three-year player, Xavier. You know, we do have some good returning guys that we'll, we, we will be relying on. And, and as important as just having returning experience in your program, they know how we do things. Our, 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 you know, we've had our backs against the wall a lot, and they know how to respond to that. And, and um, they've been invaluable in practice, really counting on those guys. Um, and I think that they're, they're continuing the effort and the um, – you know, attention to detail that we require to play here at Henderson. Those guys are doing a nice job of that. Speaking now with Coach Jimmy Elgus from Henderson State, the Reddies picked second in the GAC Easter Division according to the preseason coaches poll. Uh, Coach, you were talking about returning players really quickly. You have some uh, new players as well, including a couple of D1 transfers. 
Yeah, we, 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 we had to go out and add, um, losing those guys that we talked about, we had to go out and add some, some quality players and, and to go, to go with the guys that, that are, you know, next up in line. And we were able to add a graduate transfer at, I think we added four, four juniors and two freshmen. And, uh, we're really excited. I start from the top down, um, Drake Wilkes is a young man who won a championship at Grambling um, in the SWAC. He's a regional kid from from here in Arkansas. A lot of the players that we have in our program knew him from when he was coming through the AAU ranks. Really tough, uh, really um, skilled. You know, he's really versatile. He can play four different positions. He can guard five positions. We like to, to, to have a variety of different skills on the floor, dribble, pass, and shoot. He can do all of those things. So we're excited about his experience in his past, um, we added four four juniors, um, Damian Deer, uh, Malik Riddle, Jalen Farrell, and uh, don't get mad at me, Yuri Swinford. And and those guys have, have all come from winning programs. Um, Yuri's team, I think, was 32-1 and one last year. He was region player of the year in junior college. Malik Riddle's a, a, a junior college transfer from Moorhead State, who's as talented a guy, run and jump, score it, shoot it, as we've had in our program. We've had a bunch of them. Uh, Damien Deer's a, a combo guard that can really play. Jalen Farrell's a phenomenal shooter out of out of Ohio. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky played it. He played his junior college ball at Owens Junior College in Ohio. And then you know we we really are excited about our two freshmen. We got a young man named Kayvon Key who is another won a state championship as a sophomore and junior over at, at uh, Tulsa Memorial. And then we got a really good little player from uh, I say little he's about six four, but Josh Mason out of Nixon, Missouri. He is a uh, he's a Henderson guy. He's a tough minded guy. He doesn't back down. Uh, very skilled. I'm, I'm, I've been really, really excited with him as a freshman. So uh, you're right. You know, our challenge and, and I've, I'm sure that all the other coaches you've interviewed have alluded to just the difficulties, you know, since last March of, of recruiting via phone and via Zoom and virtual visits on campus and and, you know, just the meetings. And it was it was challenging, but at the same time, everyone had to do it and you had to make the best. But I think what we've got, what, I know I know this because as excited as everybody is, until you get into game action, until you're really competing against somebody that you don't compete against every day, you truly don't know about your team. And I, so I don't know, <laughs> I don't know a ton about those incoming guys, but what I do know is that they're the right kind of guys. Um, we've recruited winners. We've recruited, I think, a level of toughness. We've, I think we've recruited um, guys that allow us to coach them. They've been really coachable. We've been barking at them. We've been, we've been pretty hard on them, but at the same time have had, have had, 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 had pockets of loving them and, and knowing that, we, that they were cared about because um, we could have another 15-minute talk about how difficult this semester has been. You know, and, and, and just I'm not saying from, from our perspective – although it has been very difficult for us, but just from those kids. Um, not being able to compete the way that our season ended last year, in and out of quarantines, how, you know, having eight guys one day and, and being shut down the next, and, you know, then having – we still haven't had our whole team on the floor together uh, due to this semester. So um, we've been preaching to our guys about, about just resiliency, and the team that's going to have the most success this year is the team that can start and stop and start and pivot and and we might be on the, we might be getting ready to go across the street um to play a game and, and for whatever reason a curveball comes at us and 24 hours later you might be playing a different opponent that's what's happening in, in at other levels of basketball and you've got to you've got to be willing to change you've got to be willing to pivot on a dime and the team that is going to be the toughest and most resilient in the in the face of adversity and the ability to start and pick it right back up and not have, oh, I'm coming off a couple of days off. No, no, no. You you better fight and compete. The team that can do that the best, I think, is a team that will have the most success this year. All right, Coach. Well, you've shown that uh, this team that you've had, at least in, uh, with 2019-2020, in the recent rearview mirror, it's a team that's had success and a good culture there and a good process, Coach. I like that phrase, and I know you've used it before, but you know it's effective. It works. The Henderson State Reddies picked second, according to the preseason coaches poll, second in the GAC Eastern Division. And the season gets underway January 7th. The schedule, 
well, hey, you get the uh, the preseason favorite there in the East right off the bat. Coach Jimmy Elgus, thank you so much for taking time with us today as we count down to tip off in the GAC. I know it's a marathon that you're going through interviewing everybody, Joe. I appreciate your time, and uh, best of luck to you. Appreciate everything you do for us. Uh-huh.